Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and today we have a special podcast that's going to be on 1 Corinthians verses, um, wait, chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. And so we are going to have five different points for you guys. You guys can follow along. And I'm here with my sister who just graduated, Trinity Faith Rotors. Hi, guys. Ooh. And then our guest, I guess, right, Trin? Yeah. Well, I guess we'll let him uh, on. He'll be our guest this time. It's David Catalan. <laughs> <laughs> so today, like I said, we will be going over um, five different points from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. So before we get started, um, we're going to have David pray for us, and then we'll have Trinity read the verses for us. So would you like to pray for our listeners? Yes. Thanks. Lord, I just thank you so much for, uh, yeah, this message, Lord, and what you've put on our hearts to talk about, God. And I just pray again, it would be your heart, Lord, and we would just know what your word says and, and convey the message that your Holy Spirit wants to speak through us today, God. And I just pray again, Lord, that we would be, uh, we would speak in a way that would build up others in sound doctrine and in a sound faith, God, as we're learning, Lord, uh, at our church, Lord. So I just pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, speak through us today, Lord. And I just pray this message would also just speak to those um, who are listening, God, that they would be encouraged, Lord, to live more for you, Lord, and not to give into compromises, but to see the beauty of who you've created us to be. So I just pray for this in your mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. So Trinity, you'll read First, First Corinthians, Corinthians 6, 6, 9 through 11, yes. which we've already been told by some of our listeners that they would like Trinity to make an audio Bible. <laughs> and... <laughs> you're complimented on your reading whole, skills so i don't know about that you better i don't know if i mispronounce these words it's gonna be pretty embarrassing <laughs> no, you got it okay first corinthians 6 9 through 11 or do you not know or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of god do not be deceived neither the sexually immoral nor idolaters no nor I, adulterers nor men who practice homosexuality nor thieves nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of our God. Mm. Mm. Amen. Amen. Mm. So we will be basically talking to you guys about compromises that... Um, the church, especially in America, have sadly made, and we actually on our church um, wall in our sanctuary, we have the verse the in First Corinthians six. Yeah, is that it's eleven? 11. 11? And it's yeah. and such were some, some of you. you. Yeah, it says such were some of you. Like my dad always says, we want to get that were back. Where a lot of people are saying, oh, I'm a homosexual Christian, or it's okay, I just sleep or live with my boyfriend and girlfriend and God still loves me and all these things instead of reading what the word of God says and then applying it to our lives. Mm -hmm. And Amen. so that's what we're going to be doing today. And we're going to have David actually um, talk about the first point, which I have it in my notes is talking about um, fornicators um, and homosexuality and marriage and all that adulterers, all that, encapsulates i guess the first part of it so david take it away yeah so our first point is um you know so we're looking at the text and we're just taking exactly what the word of god says and i just want to talk about those specific words mm -hmm. so that first word sometimes it's translated sexually immoral um or fornication the word is pornea it's where we get the word porn and it's the idea that it's anything outside um marriage um, the other words we actually have are homosexuals, and that literally means man sleeping with man. So, like, it's mm -hmm. it literally means homosexual. Um, we have effeminate in there, which means cross-dressers. So, the New King James and the um, NASB 
they both have that word effeminate. So that means people that are Mm -hmm. cross-dressing. During the Corinthians time, they had like people in temples who would dress up as women and Mm. show themselves as prostitutes. Mm. And so it's talking about those people as well as adulterers. And that's the idea of, you know, breaking a commitment within marriage Mm -hmm. by, you know, uh, being sexually immoral with anybody outside the marriage. And so um, that's the topic we're going to talk about today. And I want to spend a little more time on that. And so I think one thing that look at is a lot of people think Christianity is all about rules, you know, don't Mm -hmm. do this, don't do this, don't do this. But I want to quote Jesus, what Jesus has to say. And Jesus actually addresses all of Mm -hmm. these things, even homosexuality within this verse. I'm about these verses I'm about to read to you. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's not just saying, don't do this. God is trying to say, Hey, this is what I want. This is what I created marriage to look like. Because again, it's God's design for marriage. We want to pursue in the heart Mm -hmm. of that. And so I'm going to read uh, Matthew 19, four through six. It says, um, this is the new King James version. And he says, and he answered and said to them, this is Jesus speaking. Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man, and that word is man, masculine, shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. That is a, uh, a woman. And the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God joined together, let no man separate. And so again, a lot of people are like, well, where does Jesus talk about homosexuality? Where does he talk about transgenderism? It's really interesting that he includes, he's actually quoting from Genesis 2, 23 through 24. So Jesus, he is fulfilling the scripture of the Old Testament. He's actually still Mm -hmm. solidifying it. And he says, you know, I made them male and female. And he Mm -hmm. talks about a man being joined to a wife who is a woman. Mm -hmm. But I just want to talk real quick. I really believe the church has compromised on a lot of these things. And I want to talk about what I believe God's design for marriage is according to the word. And, and, And I say this because before Christ, or I claim to know Christ, but I compromised these areas in my life. And when I read the word of God, and as it says, these will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I believe that's because they're they're They don't want to believe they don't want their heart to be aligned with God, you know, mm. but it really humbled me to go, wow, God, like this is what you want my heart to believe. So some principles I just want to explain real quick are number one, Jesus says they will be male and female. There's this idea that if you're created male, you're male. And if you're created female, you're a female. And that's a beautiful thing. And I really encourage those. Yeah. And the transgender movement, it it breaks my heart because it's like, Hey, if God made you a male, he made you that for a reason. It's a beautiful thing. He made you with special qualities that only male has have. Mm -hmm. And if he made you a female, he made you with special qualities that a female have. And I really believe that it's a beautiful design and to go against that, it it hurts God's heart. And Mm -hmm. it also hurts our hearts. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard genetically even. Yeah. Genetically. Right. The other thing is the priority of spouses and ministry. I think that's a huge one. It says that, you know, Jesus is saying, hey, you're going to leave your father and mother and be joined to your wife. And that's that idea that like you leave your family and there's this order, uh, this hierarchy of order. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not to say that man is better than women, but the idea that in order to have order, sometimes you need a hierarchy, right? If you have too many chiefs, then you don't have enough workers or You know, I I always use the example, like the father and the son are equal, but Jesus took the lower, uh, he took the humble position of servant and coming to earth, you know, and so he, he submitted under the father. And that's where, uh, first Corinthians 11, three says, you know, as Christ submitted the father, we submit under Christ Mm -hmm. and woman submits Mm -hmm. under us. And it's this beautiful hierarchy, but Again, we are still as men supposed to lay our lives down for the woman. But mm-hmm. again, there's this this order that I believe um, that Jesus is talking about. Also, being a provider, you know, the the husband leaves his father and mother, and he becomes the provider for his wife. And I think that's huge. Uh, a lot of high schoolers or people ask mm-hmm. me, "Oh, when should I start dating?" I'm like, "Well." Can you financially support her? I, I mean, they're say, like, maybe emotionally. <laughs> yeah, are you ready? <laughs> you ready to financially support her? Are you ready yeah. to completely, you know, and that's that's a big thing, you know. Uh, and I'm not saying you need to provide. A lot of people think financially supporting is I need to get her a Bugatti and I need to, 
I think, you know, you need to be able to afford to live independently. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. um, part of that, and you as know. a spiritual leader, as a, like, you want to be centered on God, both of you. And I think it's hard because a lot of people who date, they are not looking for marriage. And they're just wanting to have, like, a fun time or just mm-hmm. be cool like all the other kids. But marriage is intended to t- be taken, dating is intended to be taken seriously to marriage. And um, right, that dating back then, there's mm-hmm. not anything biblical about dating it's just that for us we need to make sure that like you brought up the verse david what what god joins together like if it's being brought by god or godly people are seeing it and welcoming it let no man separate so mm-hmm. but anyway yeah. we'll let david finish that point you know and yeah and uh and i think again like both being able to be independent because i mean ryan and ryan and a lot of people can, probably can relate to this as you're pursuing marriage your family, if they have an income, you know, if you're relying on them for income in your mm-hmm. life, then they're going to have a huge say yep. too. And if you have a lot of worldly people that have, that you have to depend on mm-hmm. financially, as well as you depend on emotionally, mm-hmm. you're going to have a hard time prioritizing, um, your wife and the same with a wife, mm-hmm. you know, if uh, a woman, if she's, you know, if she has an emotional connection to her parents, you know, that, she can have a hard time uh, beginning to submit under her husband. Mm. But another thing is the unity of values and life, just like you were saying, Mariah. Uh, you know, when we come, become two flesh, we have to agree on a lot of things. You know, you come together in the same values. You become equally yoked. Mm. And lastly, and this is a huge one too, is commitment. And I think that's one thing we really lack today. You know, it's like you were saying, hey, you can live together, you mm-hmm. can sleep together, um, you can do everything, you can have all the benefits of marriage without taking the commitment of any of the responsibilities. And our, I, I believe the church has really compromised that. And I think that really hurts God's heart because mm-hmm. God really wants men to be committed and to get married so that they show that commitment and there's legal bounds that protect that woman and that man within that relationship so that they can truly make the commitment to really build life together. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you guys want to add anything on that first point. I think when you show you have that commitment by staying pure and setting boundaries, it really shows how serious you are for that relationship. And I do think it shows even more love because you know that you're making this commitment right now so that you won't, you won't, you'll keep that commitment in marriage to not lead to adultery. And I think a lot of times deep down, if you're going to, you know, not be committed to purity outside of marriage, then what makes you think that you'll do that in marriage? So I think it's a very good practice and it is something that is biblical and the way God has designed. And I really, I just, it just shows so much love. We've had Morgan and Veli and Mariah and Ryan take this seriously and they've been doing boundaries and we've been, they've been having chaperones and it's just such a beautiful thing. And it is something that is recommended by God. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) can't ask for anything better just by Mm -hmm. really setting that um, commitment in place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I want to add to that trend too. Like, I love that. I really believe in waiting till marriage. In fact, I, I mean, I want to wait to kiss till marriage. Well, God believes it. <laughs> Amen. That's what the word of God says. I mean, again, the word for porne is fornication. It means anything outside yeah. marriage. And that's again, that's marriage, not just yeah. sex. That can be anything. Uh, as Song of Solomon says, do not waken love before it's time. Do not yeah. arouse love, you know? And um, I think of this like, hey, this is God's daughter. Like mm-hmm. those wonderful benefits you are preserved treat for each marriage. other brotherly and sister-like. Mm-hmm. Before marriage, too. And I love it. I've seen that. It's actually pretty cool. I think that culture has shifted in our church. I've seen some people being like, wow, I've seen how beautiful it is when you wait for marriage. You know, and again, Mm -hmm. it's more than just not doing things before marriage. I think it's making an agreement on purity together before marriage and saying, hey, like, let's walk in purity so that we can pursue getting to know each other. And we don't have those physical things, you know, that should be in marriage kind of distorting the way uh, we should pursue this or distorting how we see each other. And I think honestly, for the men out there, I speak as a man, I think if you are saying, hey, I want to wait to marry you before I have those things, like that is such a beautiful thing to a woman. I think Mm -hmm. like she can look at that and go, wow, like that's commitment. 
Yeah, I mean, it's like... Well, because just because you get married doesn't mean boundaries stop. Like, Ryan and I were just talking about that. If anything, what's really sad is you have people who are sleeping together, living together before they're married, and all of a sudden they're like, okay, well, praise God, now we are married, so we can do all that, but yet they still cross boundaries. So, like, when that... When marriage is getting difficult mm-hmm. or it's not how it used to be like the honeymoon phase, then what if there's someone at your work that tries to flirt with you or there's you are like tempted with like looking at pornography, then you'll easily go to it because you haven't trained yourself to walk mm-hmm. in self-control. And also Facebook and the internet and where people can yeah, and so for in a bad way. For us um, as Christians, we need to look at it is like our life should be a life of discipline and boundaries and, Amen. and the boundaries too. I know that's like pretty strong word and people don't like that, but how I look at boundaries, it's not what we're running away from. It's what we're running towards. So when you, when you pursue Christ, then you won't want to do those things. You'll want, you'll be okay with those blocks and those guards because you're like, I don't want to break God's heart. And so just an encouragement to you guys out there if you have failed or i mean people don't even like the word failed but if you have fornicated if you are walking it and living it now like today is a day where you can get right with the lord and the lord can redeem you that he can help you be purified Mm -hmm. and cleansed from the inside out so just know that there's hope for you and do not Mm -hmm. be discouraged and everyone um everyone that i've talked to has who has been in sexual immorality living in it and then the lord has cleansed them they they truly feel that like renewing and they don't and even though the enemy wants to remind them of their past like the lord has if they've put it under blood the lord has cast that into the sea of forgiveness mm-hmm. like he doesn't even remember that and then you're so like the beautiful. end of the verse such were some of you but you were sanctified and set free basically so it's a beautiful thing yeah exactly. yeah and we had someone um in our church who had they had failed and they both came together and said we want to make the decision yeah. to yeah. walk in purity and um and they they share their testimony at the time we're hoping to get them on here mm-hmm. um but I, I love what you were saying Mariah, about you know it's not just about boundaries like saying we're not going to do this it's about pursuing christ and yeah. that goes with our second topic and that yeah. is um, idolaters and covetousness. Yep. And uh, the verse I have is First uh, John 5.21. It says, I'm going to use the New Living because I love the way the New Living says it. It says, Dear children, keep away from anything that might take place, uh, take God's place in your hearts. And I think a huge thing is, you know, idolatry and covetousness. Covetousness comes when we idolize ourselves. But... Um, Trinity and Mariah's mom, Teresa, who passed away, but she used to tell me something that stuck with me and still sticks with me. She said, you know, purity is not something that you, is not about what you don't do. It's what you pursue. And it's this idea, like Mariah was saying, it's this idea that we're pursuing Christ. Mm -hmm. For example, I've known people that are like, oh, we're not going to, we're not going to sleep together until we get married. And they just said, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. But they never actually agreed on it. And so whenever they were alone or whenever things happened, they were doing things that weren't sex, but they were still kind mm-hmm. of doing things that were inappropriate and sexually yeah. immoral. Exactly. But, you know, I see that with, you know, with Mariah and Ryan, they, they've really come to this agreement and they go, okay, how can we be as close to God's heart? How can we pursue purity? How can we do this in a way that is really going to be a good testimony for other young men and women so that they can follow in our footsteps and they can have beautiful marriages as well. And I think that's something that, you know, with idolatry is that's when we're pursuing things that are not of God. And those can include things such as money, a job. I see a lot of men, uh, they pursue money in a job thinking that that's going to bless their family. And then they don't go to church. And then all of a sudden, 10 years later, their kids aren't walking in Christ. They're having to pay for drug treatment. They're having to do all these things. And that's where I just say we, we need to be careful not getting distracted. Mm. Um, people can be a distractive, even relationships, right? Uh, mm. Even your own wife or husband. I've seen, you know, mm-hmm. Pastor Craig talks about that, hiding behind your family sometimes and saying, well, I can't go to church. I can't pursue Christ because I really need to focus on. But I think it's important that, yes, your wife is your first ministry, but you want to be bringing her closer to Christ, bringing her to church, mm-hmm. um, spending time with her in the word, praying will together. grow your family and strengthen it in Christ, bringing yeah. them to church. The statistics show being consistent really does help marriages 
but not just coming once a month of anything that hurts marriages, but coming consistently every Sunday. Um, I think it's like, um, David, do you, do you know the statistics that my dad would say? I, I think I it's forgot, like, I don't remember it on the top of my head, but I think it's something like um, 70 um, percent of the marriages last um, that go to church consistently or something like mm-hmm. that. And then I think it's 50. I think it's like, I think it's that percent that doesn't last or something. Basically, it's very important to come to church consistently and really have a solid foundation of what you guys agree on and to really show that you're committed to the Lord, which of course should always be present in your life. But going to church is also that community to um, really encourage you guys and um, up and build you guys up in the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I think that is amazing to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and to go along with that too, I think another thing is like graven images or other religions or, you know, like idols, like actual idols Mm -hmm. in the home, you know? And, and I just say like, you know, sometimes we could take it too far. It's like, don't do this, don't do this. But I would say is where is your heart? Like, are you, is there something in your home that triggers a memory or makes you think of a certain religion or, you know, cause uh, I, the verse I have is Isaiah 42, eight. It says, I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not give my glory to another, nor my praise to graven images. And I think it's important that we really are careful to say, God, like, is there something that is taking your glory away? You know, I think it's the heart of it saying anything can be an image. Anything can be an idol. If it, again, uh, as, as that verse before takes place, uh, mm-hmm. God's place in our hearts. So mm-hmm. I encourage us to pursue Christ in that, but, uh, moving on to our third, well, actually, I, sorry, I want to focus that too. I also think prioritizing, Prayer, prioritizing reading the word, Mm -hmm. prioritizing going to church. Again, I don't believe, I believe those are tools or ways that we can spend time with God. So just doing them isn't enough, but Mm -hmm. we should be pursuing them in means to pursue a deeper relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's the best way to remove idols. When I pursue Christ, and you guys could probably agree, when I'm pursuing Christ, God shows me where those idols are and it's easier to let them go. But Mm -hmm. when I'm not truly pursuing Christ. I'm just going through the motions. Mm. Those things can sometimes Mm -hmm. easily come up. And then I realize, wait a second, these things are becoming idols. Mm -hmm. If you love me, you'll obey my commandments. I think if we really do love God, then it will kind of come naturally to read the Bible and pray. But that comes with a relationship. Mm. Amen. That's good. Three? Yeah. Three? Third point is, um, is thieves, swindlers, and revilers. And I think that all goes to the point of, you know, God doesn't want us to be dishonest. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want us to be unforgiving. He wants us to be, as I put here, and I I mean, I think anyone could argue that this is good. I mean, God is a good God. He wants us to be forgiving people. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that uh, Matthew 6, 14 through 15, it says, if you forgive those who sin against you, Mm -hmm. your heavenly father will forgive you. But here's a scary thing. But if you refuse to forgive others... Mm -hmm your father will not forgive your sins. That, mm-hmm. that terrifies me. I sit and I go, wow, God, like if your word is true, if I don't forgive people and I know that your word says that I'm going to have to stand before you one day mm-hmm. and try to explain why I did not take your word seriously. Why I didn't, why I didn't tremble at your word. Yeah. Second thing is just honesty and integrousness. You know, being a man of integrity or woman of integrity. What that means is just I have a saying I, I, I was praying about the other night and said, you know, to be right with God often means to be in trouble with man. Mm-hmm. And just because you're right with man doesn't mean you're right with God. And I think yeah, what that means exactly. is we should be setting ourselves to be right with God. I see with Jesus, you know, they're crying Hosanna and they're saying, wow, Jesus is so amazing. Hosanna, mm-hmm. praise you. And then the next day they're, they're saying, persecute him, crucify him. And I think it's important that we don't rely on what people think of us. Yeah. But rather this idea of saying, you know what, God, I'm going to be honest, even if that means my reputation gets hurt. I'm going to be honest, even if that means people aren't going to like me. I'm going to be honest, Mm -hmm. even if that means making my life a little more difficult. You know, I've seen that in my life and uh, just, you know, being honest can be hard sometimes. But I believe that standing in honesty and being forgiving is always the best place to be. I don't know if you guys want to add to that at all. Yeah, I think that I like how you said that it's not just fearing man and not doing what people tell you not to do because like let's just say like what is it like i mean abortion 
and things they're making that legal. I mean, it was made legal, but now they're trying to get it to where it's up until birth. It's just insanity. Or people say, oh, you can get divorced or you can do this or that. And so if we go by man's standards, we'll say, oh, but it's legal or I can do this. Or let's just say marijuana, you know, it's legal, but we need to judge our well first the bible also does say judge yourself rightly so you won't be judged but we need to be praying to someone 39 23 and 24 asking the lord to search us not the world and then to put our standards based off them because the world is walking in darkness and so i love that um like example i mean there might be things that people even let you do like they might let you i guess i was just talking and we were I was talking to someone and we were saying like, even as simple as like, you know, going into a movie um, theater, paying for one ticket, but then going to a few other ones. It's like, I'm not hurting anyone, right? You could think that, but you have that conviction. Mm -hmm. And if the Holy Spirit is convicting you, you're like, hey, I shouldn't be doing this and you still do it. The Bible says what man knows to do and doesn't do it is sin. So that's where we need to make sure we're very careful, not cheating people, um, not scamming, not... um, I mean, they did that back then with coins. They would, like, Mm -hmm. shave off a little bit. I mean, there's ways that we can do that nowadays. Like, if you run a business and you do things like scamming, the Lord will judge you for that. So um, what is, let's explain this, people. What is first uh, a thief? We know that, someone who steals something. But swindler and revilers, that's something that... People might not know what that is. So what's yeah, a so swindler? A say? swindler. And I love that because the, the, the Bible says, do not bear false witness and do not steal. So idea of stealing is taking something that is not yours, right? And that can be manipulating someone into that. So someone might be like, well, he sold it to me. But if you're doing it in a dishonest way, I mean, the Bible talks about that dishonest skills. Yeah. Like, hey, um, oh, this pen is way better than that. And you're mm-hmm. really leaving someone worse off than they were before. I I love what um, the Lord kind of put on my heart today is like, you should, Jesus made everything better that he touched. Whenever he left something, he always made made it better than when he found it. And I think we should be that way in our, in our business dealings, you know, um, as a good businessman, it's like, Hey, it's a win-win. You're going to get the best deal and I'm going to get the best deal. God will honor you. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of ways you can do that. I always look, Hey, I don't, I don't want, when I make a business deal, it's like, I don't want you to have to compromise too much just because you like me. I, I hope that I would benefit you and you'd mm. benefit. We can bless each other. Mm, that's good. Um, but, that's you know, funny. I wanted to, yeah, and a, and a reviler, that's just somebody that just reviles things, like hates things, like yeah. kind of just, you know, like, you know, I think a revile is like, yeah. you're kind of like, ugh, you know, um, but they're just kind of like a bitter person, you know, mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. uh, they're always looking for something to complain about and looking like just to kind of s- cause strife. Um, but I kind of wanted to, you know, and this is going to kind of lead to the next point, but I think it's really important again, that we tremble at the word of God and that we are constantly evaluating our life to the word of God. I mm-hmm. um, just had a conversation with someone the other day and I said, like, what do you compare your life to? You know, the world is constantly changing. You can look like, you can always make yourself look like a good person if you compare yourself to, you know, whatever you want. Mm. but I think that we need to be comparing ourselves to the word of God and uh, to go along with one of the verses about falling into smaller sins. There's a verse in Psalms 19, uh, 12 through 13. It says, how can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults, Mm. right? When I measure my life to the word of God, he reveals to me areas that I didn't even know I was sinning in. And I was like, man, I didn't even realize I was being dishonest. And when he reveals Mm -hmm. those things, I can change them. But to move that further, it says, keep your servant from deliberate sins. Mm. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, working when I was a, worked as a substance abuse counselor, nobody ever came to me and said, hey, I just woke up and decided I was going to be a drug addict. Mm. You know, it started with small, small choices going yeah. against their conscience, uh, going against their convictions until slowly it just continued to be something that they no longer were able mm-hmm. to free themselves of going against their convictions. So it goes into the next point. And, and that goes into the next point of mm-hmm. substance abuse. Well, so um, I just if I could share a verse, yeah. what I was saying is like, you know, cause the little sins causing into bigger ones. I think it's also important this this reminds me of how we should know how we're affecting others. Mm-hmm. And I like what it says 
in First um, Corinthians um, twelve. I mean, First Corinthians eight, twelve, and thirteen. It says, and when you sin against other believers by encouraging them to do something they believe is wrong, you are sinning against Christ. So if what I cause, what I eat causes another believer to sin, I will never eat meat again as long as I live, for I don't want to cause another believer to stumble. stumble. And that's from Paul. And so I also think it's very important to, to not lead people into stealing or being a revival, reviler, okay, can't say that word right. But anyways, <laughs> um, basically, when you cause people to stumble into sin, you're committing just as bad as a sin as the person who is stumbling. So I think it's just very important to check our hearts in everything we do, um, c- like showing what we do to people and how we live is very important in our lives so no, we don't cause people to sin and stumble. So mm-hmm. I like what you, when you brought that up because it kind of reminded me of that. Yeah, and I love that, like, I think like you were saying too, when people are like, live like I live and they don't have any anchor of morality, Mm -hmm. then people can fall. And, you know, I, you know, I've met people that are like, well, and that's the next topic we're going to talk about. I guess I'll bring up the next topic. The next topic is drunkards. Um, but I also wanted to clue, include, uh, other people. Yeah. You know, drunkenness is a big stumbling block that Mm -hmm. people usually get from seeing other people do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, drunkenness, and I actually wanted to include Galatians 5, um, 19 through 20, which includes the word sorcery, and that's where we get the word pharmakia. So again, and during these times, um, a lot of pagan practices would use substances to alter their mind so that they could experience more supernatural experiences. And so... Paul, similar to 1 Corinthians, is saying these are the works of the flesh. Like these people will not inherit the kingdom as well. People that are using sorcery, that are using pharmakia to alter their minds in order to kind of get enlightenment. Mm. And so again, in this drunkenness and this sorcery, right, using substances and drugs Mm. to kind of create this false reality or try to try to open their mind to certain things. The Bible is really clear that that is also wrong. That's not the heart of God. Mm-hmm. Um, and so with that, you know, we, you know, uh, the Bible says, First Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking mm-hmm. whom he may devour. And I go along with Ephesians six twelve. It says, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Mm. And I think it's a terrifying thing. Uh, Again, I don't believe um, the Bible does talk about like, you know, Jesus drank wine and there are instances of people drinking wine, but it's more the drunkenness. Mm -hmm. And again, using substances to try to open up your mind. But if we're wrestling against things unseen and, and these dark things, When you use drugs or you drink in a way that alters your mind, you are opening up your mind for evil things to enter your mind. And you're also, um, as Proverbs 31, 4 through 5 says, Mm -hmm. says, it's not for kings, O Lemuel, to guzzle wine. Rulers should not crave alcohol, for if they drink, they may forget the law and not give justice to the oppressed. And when you're trying to open your mind, you can change your judgment. I know mm-hmm. uh, when I was living in the world and I would drink, I would do things because mm-hmm. my judgment was just horribly off. And I'm like, man, God, I, that was horrible. I really hurt people by trying to alter my mind. And I think as Christians, we should be saying, hey, with Christ, we can do so many more wonderful things that we don't need alcohol. We don't need to rely on substances. Mm. We have the glory of God. We have his Holy spirit. Like there's so much joy to be had without having to rely on those things. So mm-hmm. I don't know if it, you guys want yeah, to ask that's that. What it says in Ephesians five eighteen, it says, do not get drunk on wine, um, which leads to debauchery or will ruin your life, but instead be filled with the Holy spirit. Mm-hmm. So it's not talking about, you know, that you can't drink, you know, like at all. We don't believe that. But sadly, there's a lot of people that instead of running to the Lord for help after a hard day or if they need to just relax or if they feel like even just taking some drugs to like understand things more, what do they do? They run to drugs, alcohol. Mm -hmm. And so for us, we need to understand when we're reading the word of God, 
when we are having a hard day, what do we run to? We need mm-hmm. to run to the Holy Spirit for help because he is our helper. He's our comforter. He's our friend. Jesus died for that purpose, mm-hmm. to send the Holy Spirit to live inside of us. So the question would be, if you are a Christian, but that is what you're running to, you're running to drugs or alcohol, is Christ really living inside yeah. of you? Because And if he is, then lean on him. Ask mm-hmm. him for help, not these other spirits, which... Amen called spirits for a reason but you had something um yeah i just was going back to proverbs 31 and i think the biggest thing in that verse is the reason why god does not want us to get drunk is because in this verse in particular it's about um give strong drink to one to the one who is perishing and wine to those who are bitter distress um and another thing is oh before that that's what i meant to read lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and pervert the rights of all of all the afflicted. So it's just showing that we need to be um, steady minded and so that we can defend the rights of the just, I mean, be just and right to the afflicted and the people that need help. And so with a mind that's foggy and unclear, it's really almost impossible to do that. Mm. And at the end of the of that section, it says, open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. And um, I think it's just such a great picture to realize that if you want to be an authority, if you want to be a leader, you should really be careful about Mm. um, this abuse and not making an abuse, being careful and cautious of who you drink around because there are a lot of people that are struggling with alcoholism and um, they've been drunkards or or they are drunkards. And so it's very important to see that this this is the biggest opioid right in America, mm-hmm. and it's a uh, pandemic. Yeah, in, one in, of those words. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but either way, it's like a it's huge a struggle that I, our family, my dad's side and my mom's side, we've had alcoholism and very viol- a lot of violence and abuse, and so this is something that is very serious, and I think everybody should maybe see if um, boundaries they can have on drinking or maybe if it, if um, you don't want to stumble someone else, maybe letting it go or giving that up. But, of course, this is a choice that you can make because you can drink, but just something to think about. Yeah, and I love the verse that talks about in Second Timothy 4, and it's, I think... Okay, so I think it's 4-3. It says, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn um, their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths or to things like drugs or like Mm -hmm. do this or that. But you keep your head in all situations, endure hardships, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. And so, and then after I love six, I'm going to read this too. It says, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering and the time for my departure is near. And then verse seven is good too. It says, I have fought the good (laughs) fight. I have finished the race and I have kept the faith. So that's where like for us as Christians, we know that why the topic and the title is compromises in the church are you're going to want to go to a church that tells you, hey, you can be a homosexual Christian. You can get drunk sometimes. Just don't hurt anyone. Or it's OK. You can smoke weed like if you have the card or, oh, it's OK if you live with your boyfriend and girlfriend, if you love them and there's no lust or you can look at pornography um, if you're not married or masturbate if you're not married. Like there's so many things that we've heard in churches, Christian mm-hmm. churches that have been justified. And mm-hmm. here in First Corinthians 6, it's saying, no, if you do these things, what does it say? Let's just go back to it. It says, mm-hmm. if you do these things, if you, um, uh, what I went to first Cor- the wrong one, but it, it says you will not inherit the kingdom of God. I am not at the right one, but. Right, First Corinthians is that says, says, you know, these people will not inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, and to go First along with that. will inherit the kingdom of God, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's a terrifying thing. I, I, I encourage you again. I, mm. I sat with these scriptures when I first was coming to Christ, and I looked at them at face value, and I said, God, I can't argue what your word says. Mm-hmm. And again, it's clear. <laughs> it's throughout the Bible as we've brought up verses. Yep. The Bible complements that what Paul is talking about 
is true. Mm-hmm. And, and it's Read all throughout Romans the Bible. Romans 1 for homosexuality. Um, if anybody has done these sins or has been around people who have done these sins, tempted they with know, these yeah, they know how much it brings pain and it, you can feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And if you don't, you might have a seared conscience because these are things that they cause pain. They cause diseases, physical, physical diseases, and they cause, I um, no, you yeah, your my face, face I'm going away mic, from the mic. Like, <laughs> mic <laughs> anyway, etiquette. But yeah, they cause problems and it just is the, it just shows that God is real because mm. these sins have punishments even yeah. here on earth because they cause pain and hardship. Yeah. yeah. And, and awesome. to go with Any that. Points? Uh, you know, cause we're going to get to the such worse some of you and I want to, yeah, we're going to get to that to right it now. now. That's the last so, point. <laughs> and, but I want to get to that, which is the idea. Like number one, a lot of people feel like, Oh, because I have these feelings, I must be, I'm not going to, I'm not going to heaven. You know? So someone mm-hmm. was told me, they're like, Hey, I have homosexual feelings. Like I must not be going to heaven because I have these feelings. I was like, it's right. I have, I have feelings of fornication sometimes. Mm-hmm. Right. But that doesn't mean I'm going to hell. I think what really it is, is whether we give into these feelings Mm -hmm. and what you're turning to, what you turn into. Like someone says, Hey, I have these feelings and I want to hold on to them. I want to believe they're okay. And I don't want to wrestle or fight against them. Then that's where God says, then do you know me? Like, if you love me, obey my commands. Like, do you know my heart? Because we can't bring these things or ideas with us to heaven. So that's where I think we have to realize that you know, we don't want to give in to these feelings. You may still have these feelings. You may still have these struggles. You may still have these desires. I mean, I know when I first came to Christ, there were still desires of fornication. There were still desires of sexual immorality. There were still Mm -hmm. desires of drunkenness. But by the grace of God, he slowly changed my desires. I said, God, I, these desires I have are not of you. I don't want to give in to them. And that's where I say such Mm were some of you is this idea of, I encourage you, you know, because you have these feelings, you can make war against them. And if you trust God's word, what he says, saying, God, I want to know what the new desires are. Yeah. And with that, I just want to share the verse I have. It's uh, 2 Corinthians. Let me actually find it. It's Colossians 3. It's in Colossians 3, but it says, you know, you have, he's put the old life away Mm -hmm. and made you a new creation. And Mm -hmm. I believe what that means is, You know, I once thought, you know, oh, you know, sleeping around and drinking and partying and being dishonest, like that's cool. And that's, but when I came to Christ, he changed my desires. I Mm -hmm. said, God, I want to trust what your word says. And slowly he would change what my heart Mm -hmm. and change my desires and how I viewed the world. Mm -hmm. And now I say, God, I stand on your word and I understand now. That's what I'd say. If you're struggling with any of these things, don't think you're going to hell, but think, okay, God wants to change that in you. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want you to compromise that. He wants you to take it before and be like, all right, God, this is what your word says. How can I change my desires to understand why your word says that and what your desire is and have faith in what your word says Mm -hmm. over what my feelings are? Mm. And the last point is when you went when you went to god and you're like committed your life to him and you're like hey i want to turn to you i it's just so encouraging because um everybody has fallen if unless you're jesus everybody has fallen into these sins in one form or another Mm -hmm. even if you um just have a lustful thought or you are just are you hate your brother so i think that i love this part when it says but you were washed you were sanctified you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. So mm-hmm. God, he, if, if you are in walking in those sins and you really are like, I want to get out of this. I want to be cleansed. God will do this right in his word. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. he's, he's just ready to take you in with open arms and make you into a pure lamb of God. So. Yeah. And then I love first John three, nine. It also says, no one born of God makes a practice of sinning for mm-hmm. God's seed abides in him and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. So that's what we're talking about here. We're not saying like David was saying, if you're tempted or there's struggles, mm-hmm. it's just saying like, you're not making a practice of it. You're not saying, 
oh, it's okay. Like there's grace. And so I'll do it again tomorrow. And there's another verse that's in first Corinthians 10, uh, 13. It says, no temptation has overtaken you except something common to mankind and God is faithful. So he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it. Mm. So never Amen. say, oh, I couldn't handle it. I couldn't control it. It was that woman. She just came after me and all this. It's like you have a choice. You all know those times where it there were ways you were able to flee or run mm. or get away from it. Like Joseph but dropping we, his coat. But a lot of times you might have been able to be like, oh, I couldn't help it. Why? Because you're probably on drugs. You're probably drinking a little buzz or something. But again, that was a choice you made. So that's why we're saying, we're not saying if there's like a whoops or, oh man, this happened. But if there is those that keeps happening, then adjust, get accountability get help and confess that to people confess your sin to one another so you may be healed and that healing isn't just like it just happens because oh i just said it out loud it happens through with men other men holding you guys accountable if you're struggling with pornography or other women if you're struggling with gossip to hold you accountable to not gossip or um if you really struggle with constantly lying that you have those people where you can just be like, hey, I'm probably going to like say little white lies at times, but, and it might seem weird. I've done this before because growing up, I just struggled with lying because I, my excuse for lying was that I never wanted to get in trouble. And so I thought, oh, it's not going to hurt anyone. Like you hear the world say like, oh, it's just a little white lie. But I was always convicted about it. But then by the time I already let the lie out, I was like, well, this is awkward to backtrack it and say, oh, actually I just lied to you. But as Christians, we should be able to talk that way. Like I could, David lied coming here. He said he was almost here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> David's like, oh, I'm almost here. But he was eight minutes away. So I don't know what almost here means. But he should say, actually, you know, I, I, no, I'm just kidding with you, David. <laughs> but just to confess or just be honest and don't get embarrassed that you fall mm -hmm. or failed, like just share it and get yeah. help. And, 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 and again, I love that confession, like saying, all right, God, I struggle with this. When we give our struggles to God, he yeah. comes alongside us Amen. and helps us. Definitely. But I kind of want to end with this last verse. Um, it's one of my favorite verses. <laughs> I say that, but it's one of Mariah's favorite too. 2 Timothy 2.22. <laughs> yep, see, she uh, already knows. So 2 Timothy 2.22. It the entire time. <laughs> It yeah. says, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust, mm. right? So we want to be running away from these things. I always say we want to throw off the old nature. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, you know, I still have feelings that I'm just like, why do I, that is these temptations. And I have, I have horrible feelings and I have to throw them off still. But they, again, when we throw them off, we can't just throw off old feelings. This is where I love the second mm -hmm. part of the verse. Instead, pursue righteous living. Mm -hmm. There's this pursuing when we're pursuing righteous living, faithfulness, mm. love and peace through the word of God, through prayer, through being involved in a church, through serving, God slowly changes our desires. When we introduce the word of God, when we are poured with the Holy Spirit by seeking him, he can slowly change our desires. He, he roots out the weeds and the strongholds of our heart that war against him, and he places new strongholds that that we can find peace in him and i and i love this i believe this is a promise in one of my favorite parts of second timothy 22 22 it says enjoy the companionship mm. of those who call on the lord with a pure heart and that's something yeah. i mean i hopefully you guys see it through these podcasts but you know at other churches where they compromise or other you know in the world like people are hooking up with each other mm. and they're doing drugs together and 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 like there's so much drama and turmoil and, and, and again, we're imperfect people, so we're not perfect. But when you're trying to walk in purity together, when you make an agreement as, as people like, Hey, we all are going to stand on the word of God. We're all going to pursue Christ. We're going to pursue intimacy with him. And we're going to be able to all be accountable to the word of God. You really get to enjoy mm -hmm. this walking together. Because it's like, wow, like they agree on the same thing. And wow, we're walking towards the beautiful design mm -hmm. of who God created us to mm -hmm. be. Exactly. And so I just wanted to encourage the church to do that. I think, yeah. you know, trust. And that's one thing. It's like, why is there so, so much horrible things happening in the church and so much drama? And I, I think it's because we have failed to have that pure heart to say, God, I want to be as close to what your word says 
You know, I want to follow the principles of your word, not just Mm. don't do this and don't do this, but rather, God, I want to pursue what your design is Mm. uh, through all of these things. But that's my final point and just final part of the message. Is there anything you guys want to add before we? No, I think that's that's good. good. You guys, I encourage you all to find a Bible believing church, a church that's not going to compromise, a church that's going to speak the truth in love, that's going to deal with the quote unquote hard verses, but. It really isn't. It's all the same. Like for us, everything we believe, the word of God is alive and active. It's sharper Mm -hmm. than double-edged sword, piercing between bone and marrow and like our spirit. And I just had someone this Sunday tell me, your dad's message was making me feel uncomfortable a lot of the (laughs) times. And I was like, yikes. And he's like, but that was a good thing. Mm -hmm. He's like, because I go to other churches where I just feel good, you know, just sit back, like eat a donut, drink some coffee. (laughs) But not here. Like this yeah. past Sunday, people were like, wow, that was fire. Like so convicting. Um, but yeah, we need that. Like we Amen. need in these last days to be spurred on. We don't need people just like saying, oh, you're so cute. You're so good. Don't worry if you're doing this. Don't worry if you're doing that. Like we need to truly love people and to warn them. And mm. so that's what we, by the grace and strength of God, do here at Calvary. So thankful for that and encourage you to pray for that so if you if you're at a place so you're not in tucson or you have a church um i would say do not leave until the lord calls you uh calls you and draws you out i wouldn't say just like leave unless they're speaking something that's directly against the word of god but i would say pray and ask the holy spirit to open the door to a church or highlight a church to you that you can go to and don't just listen here if you just listen here um on youtube i encourage you not to do that i encourage you to go in person to a church because Amen. you need to like actually hug someone shake someone's hand like look someone in the eye that's so important so it says in hebrews is it 10 25 or 11 25 uh, 10 10 25 yeah yeah do not forsake the fellowship of believers especially as the day of the lord approaches so to not just stay at home with your cozy slippers and your popcorn and just watch on youtube get out there and be willing to not just um be a church goer but someone who blesses others to be uncomfortable. And, yeah and then the last thing is we really i don't know we just encourage you also to not feel from this con- condemnation because i Amen. i just I know that's what the enemy is going to be attacking you right now. Like, oh, you guys are condemning me. But look at this as if what we said is not in the word of God, then just take it but out. Also but also just read that, the end of the verse and the hope yeah, that everybody has from that this. That you can change. Yeah. He sanctifies us. He makes us clean. He makes us right. He makes us ready to go with him in heaven one day. Exactly. So sorry that was really long. But Trinity, do you want to pray for us? And then we can end it. Yeah. Thank you. Dear God, thank you so much for this amazing podcast that we get to read your word and really dig into it. Thank you so much for your love and your forgiveness. Thank you that you were faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And thank you, God, that you are our our Savior and you are our Lord. You are our Lamb of God, that you purify us with the washing of um, by your blood so we thank you god and we praise you Mm. we pray that everybody on this podcast can find a godly believing church to really fellowship in and have that Mm. testing and have that ironing iron that sharpens iron i pray god that you would draw everybody right now to find a godly church i pray god that you would speak to us in how to grow and what boundaries to set in our lives to pursue righteous living god So we thank you and we praise you for what you've done and what you're doing in everybody's life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you guys for doing this podcast with me. And this will kind of launch our series into Christianity 101 and all the questions that people might have. So if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you'd like to listen to us wherever you get your podcasts, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us on Instagram to check out our behind the scenes at Calvary Conversations. Thanks so much to everyone who has donated. If you would like to do that, you guys can do that in the description below that says donate. And check out our website at calvaryconversations.com. We love you guys so much and we'll see you next week. God bless.